very much, Bruce. This is the man of the hour, the man on the pole today for the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. Almost everyone knows his story from a year ago to now. What is your level of excitement as you get ready to lead this field to the green flag of this historic race? You know, that race day for us is always just, it's the best because you come here, you spend all couple weeks practicing, qualifying, all the stuff that we go through the last week with all the media, all the travel, everything. For us, for the drivers, getting into the race cars is why we're here, you know, so to strap in, that's going to be kind of a relaxing moment for us to decompress and, and just focus on what we're here to do. How big are you in Canada? Is this, how, I mean, how's this playing? Do you know? I think about 5'9". I still, I know, with the exchange rate, you'd think I'm taller. Good answer. But, uh, no, you know, I, you know, I feel I feel so much support for back home. It's incredible, you know, and being the only full-time guy in, you know, from Canada on the series, we get a lot of love from back home, and um, having the race in Toronto is awesome, obviously, but I feel I feel a love from across the country, so it's, it's pretty exciting for us right now. You told me the other day you do feel a sense of responsibility to make this start look good, to sort of create the photo for this 100th running yeah I mean this this photo is gonna be I think circulated pretty widely across the globe you know and I've looked at years past where cars are all out of line and guys are jumping and it just just looks bad you know this this is Indyco we need to we need to put on a good show we need to represent our sport well and you know the front row we've all had a conversation about it we want to make sure this is done right and we've got 11 rows of three lined up perfectly spaced out perfectly then we'll let the green flag drop and we'll get we'll get to work and you're starting first, but we're expecting so much passing. And when you're first to start the race, there's a lot of uh, draft behind you. Yeah, I mean, I'll be the slowest guy on track heading into turn one. That's uh, that's a given. But, you know, like you say, I think there'll be a ton of passing, especially for the lead, because the guy up front is super vulnerable. But that's exciting for the fans. You know, we're going to have uh, a lot of back and forth. It's a lot of ebb and flow. you got to be patient in this race. It's not about leading every lap at all. If you fall back a little bit, it's not a huge deal. If on lap 80, you're outside the top 10, there's no need to panic. You know, there's still a lot of racing to go and that's the mindset we're going in with we got a great car got a great pit stall we got a great pit crew so we'll just try and put everything in line and stay out of trouble and hopefully we're there at the end last thing if you live in Indianapolis you have to know the story of his crash a year ago and coming back this year to start on the pole but do you have an appreciation for the kind of inspiration that you provided to people through this story? You know, I mean, I, I never look at it like that, you know, but uh, I've had some really nice messages from, from people, whether it was on social media or letters or people coming up to me here at the track that, uh, that have said, you know, something along those lines. And if, if that's something that I've provided for other people, I mean, that's awesome. You know, I, uh, I had a lot of people helping me out for, to get back and through my rehab. And if something I've done can help someone else out, then that's just awesome for me as well. James, thanks very much for the visit. Good luck today. Thanks a lot. James Hinchcliffe, you'll see him in car number five, starting on the pole here at the Indianapolis 500, the 100th running of this historic race.